Welcome, Welcome to, to Pandora's, Pandora's Box, Box. Takeover, Takeover Edition. Edition. Welcome to Pandora's Box, everybody. What's I am, up, of what's course, up? not Obadiah Penny Whistle, <laughs> but I am, in fact... Mr. Bullwinkle, <laughs> and I'm here to overtake as uh, Obadiah. He's gone to Greece for the weekend. <laughs> he's gone to Greece. He's he's running in the Came mayoral the election in Greece. That's where he is. But I am, of course, here with the man, the myth, the legend, Drew Bag. What's, what's, what's up, your name what's today? Up, what's up? What's up? What do you want your alias to be? Uh, plod. Plod. Plod along. Plod. Plod along to our Oscars. Nice. <laughs> nice. Um, what have you been up to, man? Ah, oh, I've been to um I've been to Portugal. Oh, man. Had a little like little week nearly a week holiday. Mm. So that's nice. It's nice getting out to um different countries again. Oh, and getting out there. Yeah. But yeah, northern Portugal in an absolutely beautiful, beautiful landscape with um trees and awesome and ah, oh, there's these things in Portugal called um uh, I keep calling them plum de la plits, but they're not <laughs> called that. They're called uh, pastel de nadas. All right, and they're um, they're these little like Im- imagine like a custard tart. All uh, right, but yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. puff pastry around the edge, mm. and then the custardy bit in the middle is made uh, from egg yolk, um, mm. and it's like, but it's like very sweet, and it might right. sound a bit weird, but the way that where they were invented, it was this monk. They were they were doing. Um, they, they, he was doing all this cooking, and for one of their things, they were you they were taking the egg yolks out um, to to make whatever they were making like mm. without the egg yolks. Mm. So they were having all these waste egg yolks. So they're like, "What are we going to do with it?" And they come up with this like pastel donada, and um, they're really famous in Portugal now. So, mm. um, but they're so good. They're like one euro for like a for for like one. So you, every cafe you go to, yeah, you can get them, and they're all but or every bakery, nice. but they're all slightly different as well. You know, they're just a, a little bit different but so tasty so i was having like four of those a day or something you oh know, just like nice so man. good yeah nice. traveling around went to braga went to porto mm. uh, the nice big cities in northern portugal because you said you're out quite rural where you were staying weren't you yeah yeah it was like a rural kind of area but the the um the uh the roads and everything are awesome on Port- in portugal oh, really? so we flew into porto and mm. then got our rental car and it was literally about two turns and then you're out on the motorway and then head into this place where we were staying. Mm. And that it was about 40 minutes from the airport. Uh, but it's these beautiful winding like dual carriageway roads, um, really smooth tarmac and everything. Mm-hmm. And then it's literally like off one of those roads and you're in the village. It's not like in the UK where you get off the motorway and then you go for like an hour inland to get like to get to these little villages and stuff. It's like it's just off off the main roads right. they seem to be so right, everything's right, right. like quite easily um, accessible yeah yeah mm. so yeah that was cool so we were in a remote location but it's just hop on the motorway yeah 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 drive for 40 minutes and then you're in like braga or porto or like one of the do they speak cities. spanish in portugal yeah so they speak portuguese oh right. yeah but, of, um, course. <laughs> of course of course but um and i was kind of hoping that it was quite close to um to spanish because i know a little bit of spanish mm. but um it, it it's kind of not <laughs> oh, <laughs> they, they, no. there are some words that are similar uh but yeah i didn't really understand are you gonna much start going learning on. on learning about it yeah go gonna over. gonna have to gonna have to do a bit of a learn on it mm. and um and and see what's going down with that but it's 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 cool to try and speak in other yeah languages definitely definitely learn it but yeah i've never fun, been man. that good at learning languages yeah me language neither. obviously the the hit the high school I guess it's high school. Uh, high secondary school. school. <laughs> well, I'm not American. Secondary school uh, yeah. that we both went to. It was a language college. Language. Yeah. Language, school, language school. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, we the, did. They we would, failed them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I failed French. Yeah. That was the only GCSE I failed. Uh, <laughs> see, I got a B in French at GCSE. Oh, nice. But I don't know how the hell I did that because I can't speak French at all. You must have just had a really good French mm. accent. Yeah. Enough to convince them. Oh, vivi. Oui, oui. Oh, vo, vo, vo. <laughs> <laughs> um, how have you been doing, man? You been yeah, all good. good. Yeah. It, was, it was my birthday this week, ah, so yeah. that was pretty sick. That was cool. Birthdays mm. are always quite cool. Mm. I did like a couple, but a little birthday special for for the other show I do, Rap Radar, and that was nice. cool. Just like picked out my favourite songs. Um, but to be honest, I wish I could say that I've got more to talk about. One up to Queen. 
Mm. That was oh, really good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was yeah. awesome. That was so really see, cool. See Queen the band. Oh mm. yeah. Not Queen the not the Queen lady. the the old woman. No, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Queen the band. Yeah. That was really sick. Mm. That was really good. We got there and uh, we got there pretty late. So oh, yeah. we got to the O2 Arena. Took seven hours to drive up. No. It's normally about three and a half, and it's Where, seven what, that hours. Was that London? And the O2 Arena, which is like the far side of London, mm. I think. The far side of the city. Yeah. So, obviously, there was a lot of, um, I think there was just like a couple accidents and stuff in the city, so it took forever to get there. But, um, yeah, yeah, no, it's really good when you get there. I was saying to uh, saying, uh, Josh, Zusua, the gold. Zusua, the gold. For everyone listening. Golden lax. Uh, <laughs> that once you actually get into that, it's literally like being in Star Wars. Like, you've just entered the Star Wars, like, port, where the entire thing is so futuristic, and there's this, like, shopping mall all the way through one half of it of, like, 80 different shops, and then you've got all these, like, food restaurants, like a bowling alley. Uh, is this in the arena? Have? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, like, cool. all inside, and then actually in the middle of it is where you've got, like, the mu- huge music venue. Yeah. So I think I went awesome. there. I think I went there with Josh, and... um. Yeah, like years ago, I think we watched Metallica there. Oh right, and um, I kind of remember that, and, mm. and Steve, Josh's dad, and and it was with him and a friend, and yeah, and I remember thinking the same thing, mm. it, and it was I think they hold a lot of events there and stuff, like when the yes. arena's not on, like, yeah. like and and yeah, and there's all these shops, and it, it was super cool. I do remember. I know they do like boxing place. events and stuff there, mm. so if mm. like if there's a huge heavyweight title match, it might go to like the O2 Arena, but yeah, just a real cool place to go, to be honest. But um, what else did I do? I went to the cricket. Oh, yeah? I went to the cricket when I watched the cricket at Somerset, which is always good fun. Mm. Recommend it to anyone. Cricket is such like a nice summer sport. Mm. I don't. I know so little about cricket. I feel like it's the sort of sport you can kind of go and enjoy, even yeah. if you don't know. Cause yeah. It's just like someone hitting a ball, and if it goes far, yeah. you go, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Like round, like like posh rounders. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Uh, but and rounders is amazing. How yeah, can, I how love, can rounders. love rounders. That was my favourite thing in school. Yeah, we were meant to do... I don't know why they timed it like this, but we were meant to do gym in the summer, and you did like one uh, term of gym and one term of either rounders or softball. Mm. But I just never did gym and mm. just did rounders instead because that nice, was always my favourite bit, nice. um, favorite bit of PE. Uh, while Obadiah is not here, I thought I'd I'd honour him by getting some quick fire facts. Oh, nice man! So I thought we could start off today with some quick fire facts, uh, but I don't have any ball facts, mm. which is a bit of a <laughs> letdown. I thought I felt no like I couldn't steal well, that from yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, it's that's got to be his man. Exactly, yeah. that's what I was thinking. Uh, so let's just get into it. So the first fact of the day: humans and elephants are the only animals with a chin. Even gorillas and chimps don't, and no one knows why. With a chin? Yeah. Oh, my God. So, like, gorillas. Think about chimps. Chimps are so similar to us, but they just don't have a chin. I don't understand that. I guess they're like the bones. They don't yeah. have the bones. So, we have chi- we have chin bones? Yeah. Like, man, I, I, that's weird. That's so weird. Yeah, I just think of it as, like, the bottom of your jaw. You yeah, know, like, yeah, like, yeah. Because, like... Obviously, animals have jaws. Mm. So when does your jaw end and your chin begin? Like, if you were to look at a skeleton, I guess they'd maybe just have like a sort chin of hole. Bone. <laughs> yeah, like a hole there. I don't know. That's so weird. I don't know what yeah. it is. It's just the just the bottom of your jaw. If you haven't got a chin, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So next fact: uh, if you have a peanut allergy, that actually means that you have Homo sapien ancestors and Neanderthal ancestors, mm. uh, because through all of the inbreeding of your different species you have developed an overreacting immune system oh. so that's one way to like tell if you've got a mixture of both neanderthal and homo sapien because mm, everyone's got that's a tiny good. bit of neanderthal in them I think but, I suppose, so. m- uh, but i suppose more people have uh more yeah so, like, yeah, 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 yeah 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 uh humans have stripes did you know this stripes. we just normally can't see them they're called Blaschko's lines and form along the path of embryonic cell migration. The stripes are shaped on our front, are, sh- are U-shaped on our front, sorry, and V-shaped on our back, wavy on our head uh, and face, and basic simple stripes on our extremities. Stripes? Yeah. Oh, I want to see these stripes. Yeah. I wonder, there must be like a way to, 
if they know we've got them, yeah, there, there must, must be a way, way to, to see, see them. them. Yeah, it's like go under some special light. Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. I want to know what that looks like. That's yeah. crazy. That's cool. Sounds quite cool that it's it's not even like a zebra one as well. Like mm. where it's all we the have same, like different. Yeah, yeah like, like on your head, they're all wavy, mm, and then mm. yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, your brain regulates how strong your muscles are. If your leg muscles were to contract at full strength, it would snap your femur. It's why people in emergencies can pull cars off of children. We are actually capable than a lot more strength than our brain allows us to. Whoa, mm. that's a cool one. Mm-hmm. So you're literally, yeah, your muscles could if yeah. if you could, yeah, and I suppose if you can mind control your matter. brain, mind never matter. Mind never matter. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. I guess there's still like even if because it was saying obviously the adrenaline of let's say your child was stuck under a car. That's why people can like lift cars up in yeah, those sort of scenarios. Yeah. But I guess the adrenaline must still hold it back a bit because mm. it was saying like you can literally snap like your bones and muscles and stuff if you like did use it all. So your brain must be like, right, we'll give you a bit more, mm. but still not all of it. You know mm. what I mean? God, that's, oh, that's crazy. Cool. So next time someone, if someone says you're weak, just say no, I'm strong, but my brain just not does not allow it. <laughs> um, next fact: your stomach contains more brain cells, half a billion neurons, than the brain of a cat. Mm. That's crazy. Mm. I know mm. we were talking about our stomach having brain cells last week, weren't we? Yeah. As one of the quick five facts. But Your gut more, feeling. More than a cat. Mm. Mm. That's crazy. Uh, if you ever jerk, jerk yourself awake, it's because your body believes you are dead. So your brain is checking to make sure that you are still alive. <laughs> so that's pretty mm. crazy. Like if you're falling asleep and then you're mm. just like. <laughs> yeah, you, I get them sometimes. I do that all yeah, the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Claudius. Drusus died in AD 20 from asphyxiation when he chucked a pear in the air and caught it in his mouth. The pear was put on trial, found guilty of murder, and destroyed. <laughs> How mental is that? You will be destroyed. <laughs> you will Where pay for your crimes. Um, not not sounds, in the English. Sounds quite Greek. Yeah. Claudius Drusus. Yeah, yeah, like Rome or something. Yeah, yeah, probably Rome actually. AD 20. Uh, I don't know. But yeah, pretty crazy. Mm. Uh, The Spartans never built a city wall, figuring that their reputation alone would mean that no one would mess with them. But during the Persian War, the Persians hired a Greek guide to take them to Sparta. When they arrived, they saw a bad looking city without even a wall and assumed that this could not be the place or could not be the mighty Sparta that they had heard of. And so they left and Sparta was spared. Whoa! That's cool. This I thought that was a real it. cool one. Yeah, thinking like you're so tough as well that no one will mess with you, even mm. if you don't build a wall, and then mm. it's still working out. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty cool. Um, scientists have discovered that rats love playing hide and seek and squeal with joy when being found or finding someone. Whoa! That's pretty hard. Playful wholesome. little rats. Yeah, I've got another rat fact here. Uh, rats have a behaviour called popcorning. Where they can't contain their excitement, they will hop. In, they will hop in place and jump around. Rats also have no preference for music except when given cocaine, uh, <laughs> where they prefer jazz music. How weird is that? Coked up jazz rats. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. What what kind of tests must they be doing to find that out? By the way, mm, that was mm. the first thing I said. What say. was the one? Was this something that you said the other day, or Callum said, or something about the, uh, or something I read about rats and and cocaine and and um, the you know the tests that uh, happen? Do you is that? Really I, I don't think I've heard this. Okay, no. so uh, if you give um, a rat cocaine in a um, or like or, or or kind of drugs, or I think they've done it with heroin as well, like right. testing it. Um, in a in a closed cage environment, mm. then they will um like basically like kill themselves, like like get addicted Whoa. and um and you know and just keep eating or keep mm. keep do, like you know it, I think they put a bit of opium in like a in a in a in a bottle for you know like a water thing yeah and cocaine as well and and they would go up to it and and just drink it and they would almost like drink themselves to death with it Whoa. um. But if you put a rat in a in a in like a almost like a rat city where mm. you they've got all of these things to play in and all right, that kind right. of stuff, um, and then you put the same thing of like the cocaine and the uh, or the opium like in that cage, um, 
they won't um they they might have a little bit of it sometimes but they'll never actually like Whoa. drink themselves to death so it's like saying about the test the, the tests of these experiments like it's your environment obviously that you think like that rat must feel like super depressed and like mm. just being in this in this closed up environment mm. and they almost just want to just like like escape yeah. it so they escape it yeah, through that yeah, yeah. but in a in a where it, where it's like exciting the brain still and everything and especially you, you said that about the, yeah and like where you where where you're saying that about the rats have like get really excited and stuff and then mm. and they actually do some things like that you know they obviously have more to life than running around and eating yeah. things and stuff so that was quite interesting oh that's actually so cool Mm. That they that they can actually like dissect. Oh, I don't I don't need any more of this. Yeah, yeah. Like so having I'm just that willpower go and play. they enjoy their life. Yeah, That's so cool. <laughs> uh, should we get onto another fact? Yeah, man. So in 1993, Doctor Carl Tanzler raided the tomb of a female patient that he was obsessed with, stole her body, and lived and slept with the corpse for seven years. Seven years. As her body decomposed, he had to keep her together using coat hangers, plaster of Paris, wires, uh, put glass eyes on, and wigs. He was only caught when, after the seven years, a local boy spotted him dancing with a large doll inside of his house. When Tamsler's fake wife's sister, so the corpse's sister, came round and saw the rotting corpse, that was her sister, she alerted the authorities and Tamsler was eventually cleared of any crime what? since his stature of limitations on the crime had expired. What the hell? So the, so from when he first did it, it mm-hmm. was so long that I don't I don't so get So he just that. got away with it. That's so weird. That's so weird. They better have took the body. Oh yeah, he even had like that. I read he even had the audacity to then ask for the corpse back. Oh, what, man? That's just crazy. Let me see if I can get the photo up of the corpse real quick. Because I saw the actual photo of the, um, like, the the body after he'd, like, added all of this stuff. And it's, like, so creepy. Mm. See if I can find it. Uh, Carl, Carl Tanzler was the name Carl, of it. Carl Tanzler. Sounds like a weird guy, man. Keep net corpse. That's it. Let's see if you can get that up on the screen. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so he did, he, he did a pretty good job, though, of, like, doing her up. Yeah, it doesn't look, it's a bit like a mannequin, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was expecting this, like, decomposing, like, no. rotten face and stuff. I guess if she's staying in your bed, you, you don't yeah. want her to look too scary. <laughs> um, for anyone that's listening as well, obviously, listening on the radio, uh, we do have a YouTube channel, Pandora's mm. Box Podcast, I believe. So uh, check us out on YouTube. You can always watch and see everything that we're talking about as we'll get mm. photos up, videos, stuff like that. So uh, it's probably the best way to watch. He looks like a pretty like collected guy as well. He looks like yeah. pretty distinguished. Well, he's like a doctor. Mm. How crazy is that? Some people are strange. He must have like really liked her. Mm. <laughs> but the, even the creepier bit was that everyone was saying she like obviously mm. wouldn't have wanted that, mm. which is like creepy. who was it in relation to him again? A student or um, a female patient? A female, literally patient. just one of his patients. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, and they got obsessed with her and stole her body mm. from, the, from the grave. It's terrifying. Uh, that's all of the quick fire facts for today. Nice, nice man. But yeah, they were they were fun. I like those. Mm, yeah, cool. quick fire facts is always a cool little segment to do. Mm. Uh, I've got some here, little English mysteries. Oh yeah, that we could talk about. I know we did one last week, didn't we? Uh, and then we were gonna do one about the Overtorn Bridge. So I'll grab up a photo real quick as I'm talking about this. So the Overtorn Bridge. More than 50 dogs have died uh, by throwing themselves off over Torn Bridge in West Dunbartonshire in the past 70 years, with hundreds more surviving the fall. So it's literally like just this bridge in England that dogs just commit suicide on. Well, like they the just time. jump off. Mm hmm. Oh man, I got so scared the other day. We were we were walking. I've got like a nine year nine year old uh, nine year old no nine month old um, Sprocker spaniel mm. uh, called Rupert, mm-hmm. and um, he's a cute little thing. But he's crazy, and he was jumping around everywhere. We went um, we went somewhere in Devon. We went to like a big dam, like a like a yeah water dam in in yeah. in, in, uh, in Devon, and we were walking along, and we went over this bridge. Uh, it wasn't a massive drop, but it was about, I'd say about 30 feet or mm-hmm. something like that, uh, down into like a river below that was going to this dam. And Rupert 
literally like ran and jumped up onto the wall um and stopped mm-hmm. oh man it was like one of the scariest things ever because he yeah. could have literally just gone yeah. over the other side yeah, like, yeah, yeah i think dogs do that sometimes they like to explore like it happened over at the docks as well like mm. luckily it doesn't actually go down it's not a very big drop or anything but he jumped up on that wall as well and then just kind of like went over the side yeah yeah and yeah. it was just some grass <clears> but i was like Ooh, like straight over, yeah. yeah yeah crazy but have you got a picture of it up yeah we got the bridge up so oh wow of that it's pretty creepy uh, mm. The pets have usually been running, d- running along happily atop the Gothic style bridge, when before suddenly jumping over the walls, always in the same spot and always on sunny days. Author Paul Owen recently suggested that the explanation for the mass canines, canine suicides was the ghost of Lady Overturn, uh, a troubled woman who apparently sent, spent years wandering the area after her husband died in 1908 but others have a more prosaic answer, pointing out that the dogs affected all were long-nosed long, long nosed breeds and suggesting that they were attracted to the scent of a family of mink nesting below the bridge. I don't mm. know if they've actually seen the mink or if that's mm. just like a theory, but pretty cool, like, mm. well, not cool, but um, mm. <laughs> pretty creepy nonetheless. Yeah, I can, like I say, because I've seen Rupert, like, jump up on things, mm. like, that... I could kind of, I could see you know because I'm looking at the wall there as well it looks quite l- like a low wall yeah so like if you if they're running along and they jump up onto the wall I can imagine you would like go over pre- it you yeah know, the dogs go over pretty easily but if they actually just jump over the wall mm-hmm. and like uh, like you know over always the in edge, the same spot that's the bit yeah I find a bit that creepy. is a bit weird isn't it it's, it's not strange. like it's just like anywhere on the bridge mm. always at the same spot mm. yeah pretty creepy. Uh, the next one I'll talk about. The hairy hands of Dartmoor. <laughs> the hairy hands the of hairy Dartmoor. The hairy hands of Dartmoor. Not the um, not the beast of Bodmin Moor. No, 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 no. This is slightly different. Uh, in the early days of the car, a number of motorists reported having near-fatal accidents on a remote stretch of road through Dartmoor and Devon. The victims felt their cars or motorcycles suddenly jolt and swerve off the road saying it was as if an invisible force had taken control of the vehicle. Mm. A few of those who survived from the phenomenon said that they have seen a disembodied pair of hairy hands grab onto the steering wheel and attempt to crash their car. In 1921, Dr. E. H. Helby, who worked for Dartmoor Prison, was killed when his motorbike came off the road uh, with two young girls riding in his sidecar. Locals have suggested that the mystery could be explained by the dangerous camber of the road or by outsiders driving too quickly on the narrow country lanes. But that's still quite like a little creepy thing, isn't it? Mm. Almost ties in a little bit of the call of the void, I think. Yeah, yeah, especially on areas like going through certain areas. Mm. If it happens, I remember like Callum telling me a story about um oh it might know it might have been paul actually that's all right how, uh, yeah it, it was callum or paul um and about uh where it, it was definitely paul, paul and lisa um callum's mum and dad in the car mm-hmm. and they um they were they were driving up over a part of the quantock hills and had this like as they were going across cer- a certain point had this like total feeling of like dread and almost like like everything just changing a bit you know mm. and and just like proper just scared mm. like like going through this certain part but they said they didn't say anything to each other at the time but then both said something to each other after right. about it right um but yeah it's like that like going through weird patches where you would almost get just this the energy experience. yeah yeah of just something like completely different mm-hmm. but yeah that's weird about like hands on the steering wheel mm-hmm. though because it's like you don't want any the idea of any kind of thing being able to have any kind of control yes. over the physical yeah literally like, being world. completely out of control as well mm. yeah pretty terrifying and that they're like re- that's quite creepy as well they're really like hairy hands <laughs> just this hairy monkey man yeah just, like, yeah pulling yeah, me off yeah. The road, like get a off. werewolf yeah pretty creepy mm. um i always used to find it a bit creepy whenever i when i was like first learning to drive Oh yeah, I used to hate like the feeling of whenever you're driving down the road and like a car was coming towards me. I'd oh, right. always be like, oh man, it's so, it'd be so easy to almost like just do that. Oh yeah, you yeah, that I mean? it, I've definitely felt that sometimes, like especially when you're on like smaller roads mm-hmm. 
and um, you're so used to it or after this many years of driving I'm so used to it but sometimes I like just start contemplating it a little bit so I'm like driving like quite fast or we're both going 60 miles an hour that way and they're going 60 miles an hour that way yeah. and it is like this is crazy this yeah. is actually crazy like we're going in opposite directions at this like super high speed mm. um, comparatively to how you can walk and that like yeah, you know, obviously yeah, you can yeah. go a lot faster in a car but it's still 60 miles an hour is very fast mm-hmm. and like you know yeah just a slight twitch of the old steering wheel I feel bye like there's bye not, there's not many situations that you would put uh, your life in someone's hand so many yeah, times yeah yeah whereas driving that is completely what it is yeah if, if they just decide, if they to, decide do it, to do that then got, you've got no say in yeah, it yeah <laughs> yeah it's crazy man and like um yeah i can't remember what else i was gonna say so leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> crazy 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 <laughs> Uh, I'll talk about the Highgate Vampire. That's where we're going next. The Highgate Vampire. From the 1960s, visitors to Highgate Cemetery in North London, where Karl Marx and other famous figures are buried, claim to have seen a vampire wandering between the graves. Others reported different ghostly apparitions, such as unidentified voices, a face staring through the gate, or a woman in white. Mm. The news was seized on by the news was seized on by two rival ghost hunters. David Farrant and Sean Manchester, who turned the phenomenon into a nationally famous mystery. Manchester organised a huge vampire hunt on the Friday the 13th of March Mm. 1970, with dozens of enthusiasts turning up in the cemetery to find the monster. Uh, The mystery, which is said to have inspired the Hammer Horror film Dracula, uh, has never been solved, but Manchester and Farrant never gave up in the search, or... Their ferocious rivalry. Mm. That's pretty cool. Both just trying to find the vampire. I wonder why they say vampire. Like what it was about. You know. It's, yeah. it's like, you know what I mean. It's a bit of a weird. It was like it was a vampire. Like how would you know? So you got teeth. really close and yeah. saw his teeth and everything. Or a yeah. man in a suit. Yeah. That's what I reckon it probably was. Mm. Just some like tall man in a suit who looked a bit, looked yeah. a bit creepy. It looked a bit white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ghostly. Exactly. Only turned up at night. Um. What else? What else have I got? Here? The Rendlesham forest incident i don't know if this is the i wrote this down and then after i wrote it i was like i think callum might have actually spoke about this Mm. on the podcast already but that's fine we'll do a short little breakdown of it uh the incident referred to as britain's roswell happened in december 1980 when unexplained lights were seen over rendlesham forest in suffolk on two separate nights just before the new year military personnel said that they saw lights flying in the sky and descending into the woodland, sending livestock into a frenzy. When they reached the site where they were suppo- where the objects appeared to have landed, they found burn marks in the ground, but no sign of debris. Charles Hart, a, co- a colonel in the US Air Force, reported the sightings to the Ministry of Defence and subsequently accused the American and British officials of conspiring to cover up the incident. A number of potential explanations for the mystery have been put forward, including unusually br- unusually bright stars, flashes from a nearby lighthouse, and claims that it was simply a hoax, but it still remains as one of England's most prolific alien sightings. Mm. Pretty cool. I love a good alien sighting. Yeah, maybe we'll have to do another one later. I've got my book mm. here. Oh, by nice. good old Dr. Graham Klingbein. <laughs> um, so maybe we'll have a look through and we can find another another little one now. But um, we'll take a break now anyway after all those mysteries. Yeah, listen and, to um, a song, man. Listen to a couple Collect of songs. Collect ourselves. Oh, yes. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Pandora's Box. Takeover edition. Takeover edition, ladies and gents. I am Bullwinkle. He is Plod. I'm plodding along. And we're here to take over from old Obadiah Penny Whistle and do a bit of a podcast of our own. Mm-hmm. So um what we did we did some quick fire facts earlier. We did some little English mysteries. Mm. And we've got loads more stuff to talk about. Still, uh I also want to say now, uh just give a little shout out to the fact that we do another little series on our YouTube called Mystery Mondays. Oh yeah. That obviously as the name suggests, goes out on a Monday uh, mm. every single week on, well, any mm. anywhere you want to listen except from the radio. So it will go out on YouTube, 
Uh, also goes out on Spotify, iTunes, mm. all of that jazz. On the Pandora's um, Box podcast that's channels. That's right. So make sure yeah. to check that out. The last one that we did was on the Zodiac Killer. And uh, the next one we're doing will be on Jack the Ripper. So uh, pretty good episode. So check yeah, them out. Same similar format to this. We're having a chat about things. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Try and keep it factual. And we kind of swap it up with the mystery every week as well. Mm. I know that obviously... We did Zodiac and then Jack the Ripper, which are two pretty similar ones. Mm. But then the one you did before that mm. was like a lot different and talking about time, time skips and time stuff like that. Time travel. Yeah, so that was a really cool one as well. So make sure to go check them all out. They are really good. But um, let's just get back into, into some more little topics, shall we? Uh, I don't know if you've heard of this before, but I, I have. And I remember thinking that this is such like a cool little story. So in July 1518... Residents of the city of Strasbourg, then part of the Holy Roman Empire, were struck by a sudden and seemingly uncontrollable urge to dance. <laughs> the hysteria kicked off when a woman known as Frau Trophia stepped into the street and began to silently twist, twirl, and shake. Whoa. Um, she kept up her solo dance-a-thon for nearly a week, and before long, some three dozen other Strasbourgia Borgios uh, had joined in. By August, the dancing epidemic had claimed as many as 400 victims and they just couldn't stop. (laughs) Uh, With no other explanation for the phenomenon, local physicians blamed it on hot blood and suggested the afflicted simply gyrate the fever away. Um, A stage was constructed and professional dancers were brought in. Uh, the what town the even hell? hired a band. Yeah, this is crazy, man. The town, ta- the town even hired a band to provide backing music. But it wasn't long before the marathon started to take its toll. Many dancers collapsed from sheer exhaustion. Some even died from strokes and heart attacks. What? The strange episode didn't end till September, when the dancers were whisked away to a mountaintop shrine to pray for their absolution. How mental is this? Man, that that's that's blown my mind. So it started in August. Oh no, when when did it start? Um Well, it says by August they they had 400. Mm. September they were still going. Christ. When was this? 1518. It's like a real famous 1518. one. 1518. Yeah, let me see if I can oh get any like Oh my god. I I just imagine that just being taken over by the dancing fever. By the dancing plague. Da- <laughs> Look at this. These are all like photos and everything that people did at the time. The oh town that nearly danced itself to death. <laughs> How mental is this? Oh my um, god. The Strasbourg dancing plague might sound like the stuff of legend, but it's well documented in the 16th century historical records. It's also not the only known incident of this kind. Mm. Uh, similar manias took place in Switzerland, Germany, and Holland, though few were as large. Or deadly as the one triggered in 1518. It's so crazy that this is described as deadly because mm-hmm. it literally, it literally killed your people. Exhaustion. That's crazy. Have you heard of um in Mexico like a thing called a sun dance? Um, like a, not it's really, a, but go it's, on. It's a it's like a type of like ritual, and um I've read about it a little bit. Um and it's where similarly like. Uh, people that people will dance mm. like for a very long time mm. under the sun, um, but I don't know. They can't eat anything, um, and I think it, I don't know if they can drink anything or it's like right. very limited on like what they can drink. But it's they do it for like for almost like a prayer, like a like for a spirit for spiritual right. reasons, right, right, right. and they will literally like dance themselves into a trance and just keep going and keep going and keep going, mm. and it's like a a real. Um, like initiation experience yeah. and they they have these yeah like connections to mm. the divine and stuff like through through these like you know putting their bodies to their to that to that extreme mm-hmm. um and i always thought that sounded pretty mad like yeah. pretty, pretty cool but yeah the guy this guy was talking about it like recently and um he was a uh, he was like an ex like uh like marine guy mm-hmm. um that that like became like a sun dancer and like did it as a practice for like years yeah. but he was saying that the w- what you learn in the marines to 
be able to um, cope with pain and uh, you know and and these really like harsh situations Mm -hmm. they were saying that he was able to get so deep into this Sundance because of that and he was just like a very like stoic kind of person just like (laughs) you know sounded so crazy but yeah so that's that's so that it kind of reminds me of that but just without wanting to just like having your body taken over and be possessed by like Mm -hmm. the sun by the rhythm (laughs) possessed by the rhythm (laughs) and it's it's so cool that it's just like a such a natural human thing yeah like they didn't even want to but their body just started yeah well you Uh, look at like african tribes and stuff like that like dancing is like a massive part of their yes. culture yeah um and you know rhythm drums like with the, some of the oldest musical instruments that are, have been around are like are like flutes mm-hmm. and drums mm-hmm. they're like they would make for i remember in peru like going to these um museums and seeing these like bones that were like heart col- hot like um hollowed out Whoa, and, and made flutes that's out. actually cool yeah that's so they it. were like some of the oldest kind of musical instruments yeah. around and yeah and then and in africa all the djembes and the drums mm-hmm. and stuff like that's a massive part of their culture and um they would create these crazy like experiences and ecstatic states through mm. like through like the drums and through dancing it's like have you yeah, ever crazy. seen those like bullet ant initiations that they do in some places in africa bullet ant initiations yeah no. where they like get yeah, all these thousand like bullet ants and the bullet ants i think it's bullet ants or uh, it might be co- yeah i think it is bullet ants and they're like one of the they're known for having one of the most painful stings in the world mm. And uh, they get these like gloves that they take all these bullet ants and put them in the gloves like and real frustrate them all day and everything. And then like their stingers will hand out, like go into the glove, if that makes sense. Mm. And as an initiation like sort of thing, you need to put on the gloves and like you'll feel this immense pain of thousands of these bullet ants. Like r- like pain that could probably like kill people from shock. Yeah, yeah. And you've got to put them on and, and as you keep these gloves on, you're getting stung a thousand different times by these like insanely like Angry painful ants. stuff. <laughs> um you you start like dancing with the tribe and you've mm. got to like dance with the tribe while while it's happening. You're like mm. in like extreme pain. Mm. But apparently it is like still a really cool experience to do. Mm. Yeah. But that's I, sort of I think you could almost like dance yourself out of pain as well. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like they kind of Yeah, it is all a state of mind, isn't it? Like, yeah. To be able mind to, over like, matter. Yeah, yeah. And it's probably yeah, like initiates initiation experience like that. It's crazy yeah. man. Uh so what could have led people to dance themselves to death? According to historian John Waller the explanation most likely concerns Saint Vitus, a Catholic saint who pious, who piously? pious, uh, it just says pious, uh, but it's probably piously, si- 16th century U- Europeans believed had the power to curse people with a dancing plague. Um, when combined with the horrors of disease and famine, both of these were tearing through Strasbourg in 1518. The St. Vitus superstition may have triggered a stress-induced hysteria that took hold of much of the city. Other theories have suggested that the dancers were members of a religious cult, or even that they accidentally ingested ergo, a toxic mould that grows on damp rye and produces spasms and hallucinations. Mm. So I guess their, their sort of thing is that there was this superstition that you know they could cast a plague of dancing and then when everything was going bad their brain was like oh no this must be the dancing plague Mm. and started dancing but i'd have loved to see that first woman who started Mm. like imagine that just randomly in the street just going to get some shopping just drops all the bags and starts like grooving (laughs) and then some people come and start joining that how mental is that (laughs) oh it's crazy that thing about the power of your like brain though like mm. if you do believe something is is true then then it actually happens so like like i think darren brown is like mm. a, one of the biggest examples of that yeah. for me like how he can he can unconsciously um trigger things in people's minds to yeah. make them like fall asleep or to start so yeah if someone knew enough about that mm-hmm. they could almost like mass like get people to to do something that yeah. they, they aren't consciously aware of yeah or if sure. like i see it as well with like hypnosis have you ever watched any of like the hypnosis videos where um someone will like hypnotize someone mm. and then um 
like tell them that there's no person standing in front of them and they'll put like someone in front of them and then they'll go behind the back their back and say like how many hands fingers am i holding up or something and it's right. like that it's like they can see through the person because they believe that the person isn't there mm. they can still see what's happening behind the person because Whoa. i yeah i've, I've read some mental. things about that, like that and it is it's almost like the power of your mind yeah. about it, you know like we are limited by what our brain allows us to do mm-hmm. like what you were saying earlier the about strength. the yeah the strength yeah. and the muscles like you know really we have the strength to snap our own fem- mm-hmm. femurs with our muscles but we don't believe it's possible or you, you haven't un- yeah tapped into i know that there's part that, of that your old age that... thing of you could bite through your finger like a carrot but our brain will not allow you to mm. that's always mm. been quite like an interesting thing i'd love to get hips and hi- uh hypnotized yeah I've, someone's so tried cool. to hypnotize me before um, but, Did but they, it didn't work. No, but oh, my sister did. Funny. My my sister got hypnotized uh, on, went, on holiday, and like uh, she went up on stage, and like and like they were getting her to like walk around and pretend she was a fish and stuff. It's like real what? weird, and she has no memory of it. Like Sherelle, yeah, oh she's like God. some people are very susceptible. To yeah, it, but yeah, I'm not. Unfortunately, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> uh, we'll have to maybe we'll have to get a hypnotist on mm. the pod at some. That'd point. That'd be so cool. That'd be so awesome. And getting to hypnotize one of us would mm. be awesome. Uh, but. We have come to the halfway point anyway, so we'll play some more tracks for you now. Uh, First up, Howard Shaw, and we'll see you after the break. Welcome back to Pandora's Box. Uh, For the first half, we did some quickfire facts. We talked about the Dancing Plague of 1518 and uh, some other great British mysteries. Uh, Obadiah Pennywhistle is not here this week. Mm. But Bullwinkle, which is me, and Plod, 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 are here to to fill your Pandora's box needs. Mm. So let's get back into it, shall we? Nice, nice, nice. Um, I asked you to bring in a, a conspiracy theory today, so I thought maybe we could get into this now. Mm. Uh, I've got a couple that I've written down, and then I don't know if you've got any you wanted to talk about as well. Mm. But um, should we get into that now? Yeah, man, why not? Yeah. So I'll talk. You know, I'll talk about the Paul is dead conspiracy. You pool heard of this? No. The pool is dead. The Paul McCartney is dead conspiracy. We'll get into it. It's like a real famous one. Uh, 50 years ago, a, D- a Detroit DJ accidentally started the biggest hoax in rock and roll history. The pool is dead craze. It blew up on October 12th, 1969, when Russ Gibb was hosting his show on WKNR. A mysterious caller told him to put the Beatles' White Album and spin the number nine, number nine intro from Revolution 9 backwards. When Gibb t- tried it on the air, he heard the words, Turn me on, dead man. The clues kept coming. At the end of Strawberry Fields Forever, John says, I buried Paul. What could it all mean? Uh, it meant that the Beatles were hiding a secret. Paul McCartney got killed in a car crash back in 1966, and the band replaced him with an imposter. The rumour spread like wildfire, as fans searched their Brito albums for for clues, 50 years later, Paul is Dead remains the weirdest and most famous of all music conspiracy theories. Uh, It became a permanent part of Beatles lore and a totally fan-generated phenomenon that the band could only watch with either amusement or exasperation. Mm. Here's how the rumour went. As summed up uh, by Nicholas Schaffner in The Beatles Forever... Paul died on November 9th, 1966. He drove away from Abbey Road late the night before on a stupid Tuesday, then blew his mind out in a car. He was officially pronounced dead, OPD, on Wednesday morning at five o'clock, which is why George points to that line in Sergeant Pepper's sleeve where Paul wears an OPD patch. Uh, But the other Beatles decided to hush up the news so Wednesday morning papers didn't come. However, uh, somehow they kept Paul's death a secret and replaced him with a lookalike. Then dropped sly hints about the cover-up. The imposter wrote, Hey Jude and Blackbird, which um, probably means that he, he had a place in the band anyway if he was going to write some of their biggest tracks. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was a good replacement. <laughs> Um, fans begin whispering about all the clues on the just released Abbey Road. Look at that cover. Paul's bare foot, out of step with the others, holding a cigarette in his right hand. The real Paul was a lefty. Mm. Um, the Volkswagen with the 28 IF license plate. 
That's how old Paul would have been if he was still alive. He was 27. No theory was too ridiculous to get taken seriously. Uh, By 1970, nobody seriously believed that Paul was dead. But for some reason, the story remained hugely popular long after it was debunked. Uh, It became a timeless ritual of fan culture to check out the clues for yourself. Uh, Countless pool bearers over the years have held up a butter knife to the back of the Abbey Road cover so we could see the reflection of a human skull. But that's pretty much the pool is dead theory. Mm. Doesn't really hold any credence. Um, I'll see if so I they can looked, find so, it. So they looked at all of the um, the songs type, song titles and kind of put it in as a timeline of like what happened and everything. It just shows you what you can do if like you want to see something in something. Mm-hmm. Like you can you can kind of bend words and create meanings out of things, which I think is yeah. a big, you know always uh there's a chance that someone might be doing that (laughs) yes yes i'm gonna have a quick look and see if i can find the actual little clip of the um pool is dead they've got there's so many like they basically like you were saying if you look for anything long enough for clues Mm, then you you probably you will find (laughs) them you will find them um let me see what, what should i search in to find this pool is dead um Revo- Revolution 9? Is that the song? Mm. We'll have a look. Uh, do you want to start talking about the theory that you were going to say about as well? So I, I just, um, I went a bit like big on it really. And like um, mm. just my, my two, like not favourite, but uh, biggest ones that I think could potentially be like conspiracy theories that could be true. Oh, nice. And nice. that is the 9-11 Okay. Yeah. 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 And yeah. and also JFK. Like they're mm, they're my two ones that that's cool. you know that are, that are hugely impactful on the world. Yes. Um. Like crazily, but when you start looking into it and and look at all of the evidence and everything, that there's a a big chance that they could have been like inside you know jobs. inside jobs from uh, like. I, I always I got really into David Icke as well like when I was younger and like mm-hmm. reading all of his books and everything and he's like known as the crazy alien man crazy reptile man yeah um but um yeah it just made me think he he came up with this thing um and he would say like problem reaction solution mm-hmm. and it's about like, almost like false flag events and things where uh, you know like a false flag where like something will happen but it's it's to cause something else and to, yeah and to kind of make something else happen in in society um so he would say that there's these big events that go on in the world um that you know you have you you create the people behind it will like create a problem Mm -hmm. uh to cause a reaction and then they'll give the world the solution as well so it's and there is like there is uh actual things that have happened that have proven yeah, to the, be this kind of stuff as the, well. The, yeah, there? like uh, what was the other one? There was something to do with uh, uh, I, I don't know enough about it. Like a, a, was it like Vietnam or something? Like the start of Vietnam? And um, and yes. It's, it's, it's a, it was a submar- submarine in Argentina or like I remember reading something about that, and it was like this this attack that happened, but it, it yeah. you know yeah. I can't um, remember the exact name of it, but I know Callum spoke about this. Yeah, and it was one that was like proven. Yeah. Where, to um, actually, hmm. The government proposed this thing, didn't they, to actually kill oh. like loads of members of the public to yeah. start a war and like yeah. blame it on um, who was it they were trying to blame it on? I can't rem- I can't exactly remember, but mm. it was to get into a war. It might have been Cuba or something like that. I, I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, Argentina. But is, um, six in my head. <laughs> yeah, but they they the only reason it got stopped was because JFK put a stop to it, wasn't mm. it? But they wanted to literally just kill like members of their own uh, public and then blame it on this other country just to get them behind going yeah. into war yeah which is pretty crazy and that's kind of what i think um 9-11 could mm. have been you know and it's horrible to say that because it's like it's pretty dark stuff isn't it if you actually mm. make a claim like that you know and yeah it's like where people's lives are actually involved and how how many people actually died and mm-hmm. oh it's horrible like you hear like the phone calls and everything that people yeah made, it's such like, a tragic last loss of life isn't yeah it? and and but you know was that an event that happened so that um the war in iraq could be yeah. started you know mm. and like i don't know i i haven't looked at back looked at it for years but that was one that i like really mm-hmm. w- was kind of i remember watching like videos of um like structural engineers mm-hmm. and everything talking about um what it would what how how it how hard it would be to actually 
not how hard it would be, but just it, it's like a planned demolition. Like yeah. when you see it and yes, yeah. the way there, there's, like, I remember reading about like steel rods that are up through the building. That's what I was going to say. And they've got like, they've got like cut marks in them mm. of like, or like, you know, where like you do it on, you'd have to do it from the bottom of the building on to, to make it drop like that mm-hmm. because of the steel rods that all get there. And the, like the heat that would have had to have, have um, you know, the heat that the building would have had to have been to make it melt the way it mm-hmm. did and stuff like that. It's just all I so know crazy. One of the big quotes, isn't it, is that jet fuel doesn't melt steel beams. Yeah. That's like the main yeah, quote because yeah. the, the temperature that jet fuel like burns at mm. doesn't actually go reach anywhere near high enough to melt the beams that that's it, were yeah. in place, which yeah. is quite like a crazy thing. If, if that's like an actual fact, mm. like that's mental. <laughs> yeah, and the and the um, the sound that people heard from the bottom of the building like at the kind of start when it was happening they they heard an explosion mm. from like the bottom of the building and and what was the other what was the other building as well so there yes, was like the, the, it's like the third tower or something isn't it yeah it was another building that came down like uh, exactly the same day as well and they just part. i know i know what you're talking about because uh, it, i i think it was called like the third tower or something it mm. wasn't like anything to do with the twin towers obviously but it was mm. just like a building next to it but that got like completely fell down, didn't it? Mm. And then they just said, "Oh yeah, Demolished it was well. because there was fire next to it," mm. and, and it, it like didn't really make any sense because the fire didn't even still. like touch the building. It was just like too hot near it, so it yeah. all just collapsed. I know that's been like one major major sticking point. Mm. I don't actually know much about the JFK one though. Mm. Yeah, me neither, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's it's one of my favorites just because like uh, you know it's everything that it reminded me of that thing like that almost like false flag thing if someone is trying to do something that is so against the what the actual plan of the people who are really in control Mm -hmm. want then they will get like snuffed out or they'll get um or or the the path will get changed through some big event like 9-11 or something and like jfk like the things that he was doing like leading up to his death and stuff and like Mm -hmm it seemed like some of the things that he was doing would have been like really good for the people and like he didn't want the um, money to be like privatised mm. or anything. Well, like this thing we are saying about with, mm. that he stopped as yeah. well. Yeah, where, yeah. Where the government literally wanted like to, to kill people and that's been like an actual fact now because all the, the papers have come out and been made public. Mm. So everyone knows this is something that happened and he was the one that put a stop to it. Yeah, so it's someone who has like that much control mm. in that position of power. If they go against like the grain too much, mm-hmm. then... Yeah, because I, I just remember... Because it's like the magic bullet theory and stuff, isn't it? Like, oh, right, what's that? Um, it's if the... With the, with the kind of... Um, the point of entries of like the bullet and stuff into the body uh, for for the actual person that was um put down mm. for it would have shot jfk from that actual place mm. like the 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 flight path that the bullet would have had to take in if you you look at it when they show you the breakdown of it and it's like twirling around the body and, sh- and then and all that stuff and it's like it's called the magic bullet theory because it's like you would have had to have been mm. a magic bullet to do to inflict the damage that he had on the body like um, you know, if it fr- from that trajectory, from yeah. that from that point where they say that guy shot him from and everything, so it just seems to me like a, a bit of an inside job, really. That yeah. it was like they want they wanted to get him at that time, needed to get someone to cover up for it. Mm. Yeah, just a bit of a another one that I've always sort of thought has been like quite holds like quite a lot of credence, and I do actually believe is more likely to be true than what is just given as a fact is the whole Jeffrey Epstein case. Mm. like the Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself do you know much about this uh no but I started watching a um a Netflix documentary series mm-hmm. about Epstein all right and it was like I didn't even know anything about it mm. but it, but he um seemed like a bit of a sex pest <laughs> yeah yeah not a very nice man um mm. obviously he had like an island mm. um where a lot of the elite would go to and and everyone originally just kind of thought it was like oh you know it's just this holiday place holiday mm-hmm. island where they're going with mates and maybe for some people it was you know you can't say for sure that everyone that went there indulged in this stuff but i mean you can imp- well you can't imply it but, but you can th- there is a chance mm. there's definitely a chance that all the people that would have gone there would have known it was happening and and everything but they had like i think they had like kids and stuff there mm. And, you know, not not a very nice place, not a place that you would want to go to. Mm. Um, 
but I know there's been lots of stuff like with Pris- Prince Andrew, isn't it? Prince Andrew. Oh, right. Yeah, he was I like, know much about He was like really good friends with Jeffrey Epstein, I believe. Ah, okay. So yeah, I remember at the start of the, um, just watching, I only watched a, a couple of episodes in the mm-hmm. documentary, uh, but it was like, yeah, all of these like young women and stuff that were like talking and giving interviews about yeah. Um, that, yeah, like where he, he had this house in somewhere in America and mm. they would like go there and like they'd have to massage him and stuff and he'd have like this mm. and he'd always kind of like it'd always go a bit you know south but it, it was almost like targeting very young girls mm-hmm. that were like almost quite not not well off financially and stuff and they would yeah. get like paid loads of money to go to this mansion and that and yeah, yeah. And it, it just oh it's just so horrible it's so yeah it's crazy that stuff like actually happens in the so, world you know yeah, yeah yeah so as the theory goes he was arrested Uh, and to be put on trial, where he was supposedly going to blow the lid on literally everyone that come to the island and Mm. took part in it, and that was going to be his almost like plea deal, to like get him less time in jail. And uh, I think it was the day before, uh, it was actually so he was supposed to go to court and like literally say all these names and tell what happened. There was a bit of a suspicious thing that happened, so... Uh, this huge person, obviously, that could have literally blown the lid on so many of the elite, um, allegedly, that would have been there. Uh, literally on the night before he was going to do it, the I want to say the security guards both sort of like went to sleep <laughs> and, and like left him. Mm. And then by the time he was found, he was dead. Mm. So the official statement that was released was that he killed himself. Mm. But um, people have like examined the uh, what is it when you when you die? There's an investigation that goes into it. What's that called? Mm. I, uh, I know, like the, the post mortem thing. With, yeah, like, I guess body, it's like right? yeah, like a post mortem, and they've released like pictures and everything of mm. it. Yeah, so you can see like the body and and yeah. make your own, you know, make your own asset judgment. That's mm. what I'll say. But um, the way it looks, everyone like scientists and everything have said that there's no way because mm. they claim that he used his jumpsuit to like to tie it, yeah to hang yeah. himself from the top bunk and there's like a couple reasons why that couldn't have happened mm. like one of them being that he could have just stood up mm. from where his top bunk was and another being when you actually look at like the the cut that he had it was like an incision mm. rather than like imagine this big jumpsuit mm. that was sort of tied around your neck that would be like a huge big thing wouldn't it mm. and and it wouldn't leave just like a, almost like a wire mm. of mm. a of a cut across your throat Mm. But that was what he was left with. And then there was also like loads of bones that were broken and stuff that mm. didn't really make sense and weren't explained. Mm. But um, yeah, so he no one got blown the lid off of. Mm. But that's like something that a lot of people theorise. And I do believe probably is true. Yeah. and um, Allegedly. I remember, <laughs> um, yeah, watching a Joe Rogan podcast yeah. and they were going into it on that. And, like, yeah. and, and basically everything you just said, yeah. And it was like, I remember watching it and thinking, yeah, that doesn't sound... Like, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. It doesn't sound crazy, does it? Mm. Uh, I'm gonna click this The Beatles Paul McCartney backwards. I'm hoping this is gonna be the little clip that I was hoping for when talking about the, the Beatles theory. Mm. So, here we go. <laughs> So that supposedly Paul is a says, dream. Miss him, miss him, miss supposedly him. Supposedly says that Paul is a dead man. Oh, miss yeah. him, miss him, miss him. Yeah, I'm not, not, not too. Um... No, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. Paul is dead man. Paul is dead man. <laughs> yeah, sounded northern as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. Paul is dead man. <laughs> but yeah, that was. Well, that's our conspiracy theories for the day, I suppose. Mm. Um, should we go into another song and then? We'll recollect and talk yeah, about some more stuff. Sounds good, dude. After the break, so stick around. And you're listening to Pandora's Box Takeover Edition, baby. Uh, I am Paul Winkle. He is Blood. I'm Plod. How's it going? And plodding we're along. Plodding along. And we're here to talk to you about loads of different stuff. Whatever comes out of the box. It's mm. our little slogan. So whatever comes out of the box. And the next thing that it's I've got to talk about box. that's coming out of the box is a little historical story mm. called Operation Mincemeat. You heard of this before? <laughs> Operation Mincemeat. <laughs> You're going to be mincemeat. I am the head of Operation Mincemeat. <laughs> so. I haven't heard of it, man, no. I hadn't heard of it until I read about it, but it sounds pretty cool. Uh, during World War II, 
British intelligence officers managed to pull off one of the most successful wartime deceptions ever achieved, Operation Mincemeat. Uh, in April 1943, a decomposing corpse was found or discovered floating off the coast of Huelva in southern Spain. Personal documents identified him as Major William Martin of Britain's Royal Marines. Mm. And he had a black attach case uh, chained to his chest. When Nazi intelligence learned of the downed officer's briefcase, as well as concerted efforts made by the British to retrieve the case, they did all they could to gain access. Though Spain was officially neutral in the conflict, uh, much of its military was pro-German. So the Nazis were able to find an officer in Madrid to help them. In addition to other personal effects and official-looking documents, they found a letter from military authorities in Tunisia. Uh, Oh, no, military authorities in London to a senior British officer in Tunisia, uh, indicating that the Allied armies were preparing to cross the Mediterranean from their positions in North Africa and attack German-held Greece and Sardinia. Uh, This intelligence coup for the Nazi spy network allowed Adolf Hitler to transfer German troops from France to Greece ahead of what they believed to be a massive enemy invasion. The only problem? It was all a hoax. Mm. The drowned man, or the drowned man, was actually a Welsh tramp um, whose body was obtained in a London morgue by British intelligence officers Charles Cholmondele and Ewan... Ewan Montagu, um, the brains behind Operation Mincemeat. After creating an elaborate fake identity and backstory for William Martin, Charles Mondré and Montagu got Charles Fraser Smith, thought to be the model for Q in the James Bond novels, uh, written by former British naval intelligence officer Ian Fleming, to design a special container to preserve the body during its time in the water. One of England's leading race car drivers transported the container to a Royal Navy submarine, which dropped it off at the Spanish coast. Once the Spanish recovered the body, British authorities began their frantic attempts to recover the case, um, counting on the fact that their efforts were to convince the Nazis of the document's validity. As a result of the false intelligence carried by William Martin, the Nazis were caught unaware when 160,000 Allied troops invaded Sicily on July 10th, 1943. In addition to saving thousands of Allied soldiers' lives, Operation Mincemeat helped further Italian leader Benito Mussolini's downfall and turn the tide of the war towards an Allied victory in Europe. That's so cool. That is awesome. That isn't is it? so cool. That's clever. How smart? Mm. How smart is that? To like spend get just get some random tramp's body, mm. put it in the water. So mm. you they they were like a step ahead in every single way, mm. weren't they? Mm. And then like pretending to frantically get it back just to give it more validity so that they yeah. Would find it. I just wonder like they thinking about what those efforts would have been and everything and like back in the time where again things are so different with intelligence and with mm-hmm. with like um, monitoring and everything and. And, and yeah how you can collect information and just like yeah putting the feelers out so mm-hmm. much for that's happened that was really cool really cool story yeah mm. yeah I thought that was a real cool one when I found it this morning yeah mince meat operation mince meat I don't know if that's set up I don't know when D-Day was and I feel like I should know when D-Day was maybe, oh man I feel maybe like I should, I should as well. Callum is gonna absolutely kill us yeah <laughs> yeah, when we, yeah when he realizes we don't know when D-Day we'll was. never be left to do another show alone <laughs> uh, when was D Day? Let's have a look. As a as a probably a prominent sixth of June, nineteen forty four. All right, so this didn't set up D Day then. I don't see no. <laughs> don't it, was before, it was before D Day, wasn't it? Yeah, I did it. To be yeah, honest, so I, I didn't even look at the year. I I just was thinking maybe that's what set that up. But mm. yeah, no, that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool though. Yeah, I wonder how many like because that's almost like a false flag, isn't it? Like that's like a. You know, you create something to happen yeah. because of a because of a reaction that you want. But um, I wonder how many of those have mm. been, and we just see them. Don't as even like, know. Mm. One thing I wish I'd looked into. Uh, there's there's there was an operation, and I can't remember uh, for the life of me the name of it. But it was like a mind control operation. 
mm. that was found to have actually been like real that the USA did mm. to try and like mind control people. Yeah, I've heard the ones with like LSD and stuff. There was mm. like LSD experiments, right? And what we've also talked about was the the thing that was um um that was inspired Stranger Things. Uh, right. Yeah, we need to get into those because they're all so cool. But there's yeah. yeah loads of these things that have happened like mm-hmm. um. Yeah, top classified experiments. Yeah, just on, yeah, yeah. yeah. We should do an actual. We should do like a classified episode. Yeah, where we just do like classified stuff. That'd be so awesome. Yeah. Um, should I talk about another thing now? Yeah, the man. satanic panic. The satanic the panic. satanic panic. So, for years during the 1980s and 1990s, America became convinced that an underground network of satanists was working together to kidnap, torture, and abuse children. None of it was real but the conspiracy theories destroyed lives and livelihoods. The pinnacle was Geraldo Rivera's infamous NBC special, Devil Worship, Exposing Satan's Underground, which aired on October 28, 1988. Rivera revealed on the self-proclaimed Satanism experts misleading and inaccurate statistics, crimes with only tenuous links to Satanism, and sensationalised media reports. It was the most viewed documentary in television history. What? Yeah, pretty crazy. Um, there are over one million Satanists in this country, Rivera said, adding that the odds are they are in your town. Hmm. Really spread in fear. Hmm. Uh, the panic grew out of the idea that memories of abuse were often repressed and could be recovered with the help of hypnosis and a therapist. This idea was popularised by the 1980 book Michelle Remembers, co-written by a Canadian psychiatrist and the patient that he eventually married, uh, ethics red flag is got in brackets there, in which the eponymous Michelle recovers memories of their supposed ritual satanic abuse conducted by her mother. In 1983, the panic exploded when the McMartin preschool trial in which a California parent accused daycare owners of sexually abusing their son. Police then sent a letter to parents warning that their children may have been abused, urging their parents to ask what turned out to be leading questions to a bunch of suggestible preschoolers. Further questioning by authorities continued in this vein, yielding alleged eyewitness accounts by children of networks of secret tunnels and witches flying through the air. Mm. It almost goes in with what we're saying a couple of weeks back about how kids probably shouldn't be like made to go into court and stuff mm. and testify because mm. their imaginations are so so easily suggestible. Mm. And like 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 it was saying, if you uh, lead with what what does it say, yielding questions or leading mm. questions actually um you can kind of send them down the line that you want to hear yeah yeah Uh, after seven years the daycare owners were eventually acquitted or had the charges dismissed one was jailed for five years while awaiting trials and retrials in the meantime similar accusations spread through daycares around the country most were spurred on by now discredited methods of questioning small children Mm. Methods that often led to children making sensational accusations because they wanted to please the authority figures questioning them. Mm. So like we're saying, Mm. literally just using the kids. Mm. Uh, In a 1992 report on ritual crime, FBI agent Kenneth Lanning concluded that the rampant rumours around ritual Satanism were unfounded. Philip Stevens Jr., Associate Professor of Anthropology and at the State of state university of new york at buffalo said that the widespread allegations of crimes by satanists continue the greatest hoax perpetrated upon the american people in the 20th century Mm. pretty creepy yeah i don't like that man no that's 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 crazy it's quite sad isn't it yeah to think that because it is it's like stuff like that does go on and it's like you know to to kind of make it a you know, if it's not true, that's that. Yeah. yeah, it can proper spoil people's lives. Yes, you know exactly. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely crazy. 
Hi- hypnosis as well. That mm. there was a bit of thing. Was it in that a bit about hypnosis? Um, um, yes, that they could like bring back memories and stuff. Yeah, for yeah. It. So that that reminded me like of um, I got so. We, I know we talked about it earlier about mm. how cool it would be like to be put under and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, there was this woman called Dolores Cannon. Have you ever heard of her? I haven't. No, no and she was like a. Um, I think she was like a like a, like a therapist or something, and but like back in the war, and she started um, she 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 started looking into hypnosis to help uh, people that that had been through like really bad things in the war and stuff, mm-hmm. and she got people into like a deep she she saw that she could very easily like she had a knack for putting people under in, in mm. into like hypnosis yeah and she would talk to them and um almost yeah like have these therapy sessions with them um but but started going to to places where she would yeah like enter like the the subconscious mind mm-hmm. uh where people would talk about stuff that that like like yeah like yeah. hidden memories and and things like that and it really fascinated me like um like reading her accounts because she would record every every kind of session she's ever done she would record it Mm -hmm. and then she's made books now that are just recordings of these sessions that she's Mm. had uh but it goes absolutely crazy Like, like yeah like um she claims uh to to uh, about like you know past life regression mm-hmm. and things like that so people will start in this hip, hip, like notic state will and in these trances will start talking about uh yeah their past lives and and uh like completely lots of lots of different things and even like um past lives like not on this earth and, and you know and like, like remembering like alien lives and stuff yeah. like that and 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 times and not everyone would be go into like oh i'm cleopatra and you know mm-hmm. you people say when they have these past life regressions and they're always someone very famous like yeah. you know, it's none of that like she would have so many different accounts of like very very like just mundane mm-hmm. like you know like kind like of lives, and, lives then, yeah. and then they would draw pictures and stuff of like things that were at that time and i used to blow my mind you know but um yeah like a few years later now i'm thinking like because i at the time i was thinking that's so amazing that you are basically tapping into uh this unconscious part of your mind Mm -hmm. and that you can almost like trust that and for me that was evidence of like people experiencing you know all that the past lives were a thing yeah and that um you know all of that kind of stuff um but now i'm kind of thinking back on it and like you're saying about the kids having like active imaginations like how do you know that you can trust your subconscious mind yeah because like is your subconscious mind uh imaginative as well Mm -hmm. like because you're not conscious of it that doesn't necessarily mean that you can completely trust your your unconscious Mm. mind because it still might be just Imagine, almost just let loose to yeah. ima- and and just because you can't because because these people that would come out of these trances mm-hmm. they would have um very little memory of like what they talked about yeah to no memory so it's like a little to no memory of like what they what they talked about in in their hypnosis session uh but you know is it just that their like mind is go is almost un like opened and like they're able to just go crazy with like yeah. their imaginative stories but oh yeah that's it like there's um some of the books they're called like the convoluted universe and then the convoluted convoluted universe part two and stuff and it's all mm. like like uh yeah like interaction oh because that was it because she would speak to the people in path life regressions but then it would go to like she would almost like speak to um other beings or other levels of consciousness like through the person that was in a trance Mm -hmm. so like through their trance state they she would like almost tap in and there would be something that would almost like speak through them yeah man it was like it's it's blowing my mind it's all like pretty crazy but yeah that was that's pretty crazy that's so much (laughs) crazier than what i was gonna like say as well (laughs) is because when you started talking about hypnosis i was gonna say my my ex-girlfriend used to have like a huge fear of blood mm. uh, and it would make her like faint sometimes that make her you know cry everything and her mum is a sleep therapist oh yeah but she was talking me through the experience that her mum gave her and she since like can now like she's okay with it mm. and she it was like a, she said it was like going through these memories and like this dream almost but like hearing this narration from her mum 
yeah like, as she was speaking over her as she was sleeping and sort of like mm. put her to sleep and then like spoke into her mind as she was like wow. going through this journey and then it yeah. kind of like cleared up this fear of blood yeah that she had. yeah i, I do really think cool. yeah that's like that's a proper thing that can happen as well mm. i think you know because it is it's like your unconscious mind you don't know that's the thing you're not conscious of it like you have these yeah. fears and you have these like um irrational kind of fears and stuff and like if you can just switch something in your brain in your unconscious brain to stop you um feeling or, or thinking that mm-hmm. then it's not going to affect your life anymore and that's what i i found so interesting about it like because they would she would like go so deep about past life regressions and that mm-hmm. and she'd almost say that these experiences you've had in past lives will actually affect you in this life without you even realizing so you mm. could have like a total fear of like heights or fire or something mm. like that because of like mm. in that past life you you died in that way yeah. or like you know and like yeah and I, i'd think oh what is there anything that's in my life that's holding me back right now from being like the best version of myself right. that I'm not even conscious of mm. because it's something to do with like something that happened in my past life or like a um or, or an unconscious fear that I'm not aware yeah. of of like you know what I mean? It is yeah, just yeah, like yeah, the mind is so interesting. Yeah. I don't know whether it's Such real or mis- not, but the, the I like mind to is a mystery, that. isn't it? Yeah, it is, man. There's They're, so much about it that we don't know. And that's mm, what's so intriguing. Mm. Is like you say, all these possibilities could be the case we just don't know it yeah 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 uh we'll get into the final couple of tracks for today and then we'll be back after that so now furniture brilliant mind and then after that annihilator we'll be back in a sec guys uh you are listening of course to pandora's box takeover edition i am bullwinkle I am Plod Along Trabascus. Oh, Plod Along. <laughs> uh, we've been plodding along today, talking about loads of different stuff. Mm. Uh, so if you missed the start, go back and listen to it. Of course, what are you doing? Uh, you can check us out on YouTube or Spotify if you are listening on the radio, of course. Let's get back into it, shall we? We're, we're coming mm-hmm. near to the end of the show. But I've got another little Great British mystery that I thought we could talk about. I think this is in Great British. Uh, so... Amateur photographer Jim Templeton took a series of photographs of his young daughter in 1964 while on a day trip to Berg Marsh overlooking the Solway Forth in Cumbria. When he had the pictures developed, he noticed for the first time that there was a ghostly figure in white, apparently wearing a space helmet, standing in the background. Templeton, insisting that there had been no one nearby when the photograph was taken, reported the matter to the police, but was told it was not suspicious. Soon afterwards, he received a visit from two men who said they worked for the government and referred to themselves by number rather than name. So that's even creepy, Mm. let alone. Uh, Some have suggested that the spaceman was just Templeton's wife standing with her back to the camera but he insisted she was not in the shot at the time he took it. And that's all the information I've got on that. Whoa. But I want to know what like mm. what those people came that, mm. that introduced himself just by ne- uh, number and not name. I want to know what they came and asked him. Yeah, right? that's weird, man. Yeah. I, I love all the uh, you, like photos and things that have had these. And I think the old school photos are like really interesting because they can't really be tampered with. You know, yes. there's just like these ones that are developed you know in the light rooms and everything it's like a lot of stuff like that isn't mm. it i think we spoke about that like a week ago or two yeah ago. yeah the, there's I love so many stuff. of these different like uh things that have come up of just mm. random stuff in the mm. background of photos man i got like so um i used to think that i could see orbs flying around right with my with my camera right and right, i'd right. be and, and like the house in cannington has seemed pretty haunted where it's really really mm. old and i would sit there and the dog would go quite crazy sometimes so i thought oh that's the dog being able to see a ghost but i'd be looking in my camera on my phone and recording this the, these videos and i would see little orbs like Whoa. flying around uh but then like <laughs> what i realized <laughs> is if little bits of dust mm-hmm. come like fly across the the camera when you're in a dark room they go very circular because they're not in focus <laughs> and, they, and it was just bits of dust flying you know it's, uh, yeah but there has been some like really cool if you look up like 
orb photos like mm. india and stuff and people doing like mass meditations and everything um you can get some crazy f- like footage of like massive orbs that come down and there was even this one that i saw of like it looked like an alien like a gray alien Whoa. um but like in the middle of like where they're all doing the meditation you could almost see like the outline of its head mm-hmm. and its big eyes and stuff and i was like Oh, so cool. Oh, that's sick. Cameras picking up things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, what a place to leave <laughs> this week's Pandora's Box. We have come to the end of the show. Um, thank you for listening. And yeah, uh, guys. We'll, be, we'll be back to normal next week. So mm-hmm. stay tuned for that. But uh, until then, we love you. See you next week.